maracoyo, maracoyo, which is what we call passion fruit. No. Yeah. Uh, Ecuador, I'm sure the same kind of geography as Ecuador with two cordilleras and a valley in between. There's three in Peru. Uh, yeah. Yes. So this is in the foothills of the first one, the Cordillera Occidental. What are you talking about? What's that? I didn't hear the truth discussing it. Is it Cordillera? Oh, Cordillera is, uh, just means a mountain range. So there's three principal ones in Peru, the Occidental, the Central, and the Oriental. So this is just coming in from the coast. So this would be in the foothills of the Cordillera Occidental. And this is Ex Hacienda, once again. And uh, this is just a political poster, but I just think it's such a, uh, when somebody wants their vote for the local, uh, the local uh, municipal committee and the local municipality of Wamba, but the name of the, I just think it's such an inspiring name that it's Ex Hacienda. Okay. And people have actually taken back the land, and now they're growing their own corn to feed themselves, as opposed to and <coughs> growing their own passion fruit. Controlling their own destinies. Growing uh, avocado, uh, banana, it's me on a mountain trail. Oh, yeah. And I should point out I'm wearing the same shirt in this photo that I'm wearing today. Let me show off my, uh, my uh, fashionable Peruvian radical shirt t shirt. This is Jose Carlos Marigataguay, who was uh, the great Marxist theorist of Peru back in the 1930s, and the slogan says, uh, La revolución no es calco ni copia, sino creación heroica. Revolution is not a carbon copy or a Xerox, but a heroic creation. And the point he was trying to make was um, that uh, it's really sort of the thesis he devoted his work to was uh, the notion that uh, we should look for models of socialism in the in the indigenous past in the Americas and um, to uh, you know self-governing, self-sufficient indigenous communities as a as a as a model for what uh, socialism could uh, could look like even even in the industrial age and uh, this is beginning to come together in Peru. Now moving up uh, further up the coast, this is Cajamarca. People might be aware of what's been going on in Cajamarca. It hasn't got nearly enough coverage here, but. Uh, <clears throat> There's a, a big, uh, very controversial mining project by the name of Conga, which um, <clears throat> which is being uh, why have we got some feedback? That's annoying. Which is which is being developed by uh, Newmont Mining of Colorado um, on uh, areas where uh, where there's um, some uh, highland lakes, which uh, the campesinos uh, use and depend on for uh, for their water. Um, so uh, the, uh, the, the the site we'll see a picture of this in a moment. The site that the uh, that Newmont wants to develop for the mine has actually been under occupation um, for um, for about a year uh, by local campesinos who say that they're going to put their bodies on the line to prevent the the mineral project from going ahead. So um, this is actually Bill. Time's up in the room. Bill, you'd be interested in this. He left. He left. He's obsessed with plumbing. Well, this is this is plumbing that dates all the way back to uh, the time of the Incas or even before. The amazing thing about this is the city of Cajamarca, right outside of the city of Cajamarca. This is a national park, which is a protected area. One of the reasons it's protected is that um, it's actually got these uh, these irrigation canals, um, which were which were used in pre-Inca times, and are actually still <clears throat> feeding the municipal water supply of the city of Cajamarca today. So uh, a part of the um, of the municipal water supply for the city of Cajamarca is actually still fed by these uh, by these irrigation canals, which date all the way back to actually from before the Incas, from something like the probably 500 to 1,000 years ago. Uh, you see the water coming down from the mountains. These are petroglyphs right over the irrigation canal. It's chewing right out of the rock. And here's where it begins to meet more recent channeling, which delivers it to the city water supply. And 
this is the city. This is the colonial church in the city of Catamarca. And Marcha Nacional Port del Agua. This was in uh, February of last year, February of 2012. The, um, the campesinos actually marched something, how many miles would it, 500 miles or something, from, uh, from Calamarca to Lima to protest this mining project. Aerial view of the city of Calamarca. And uh, it's interesting, the, uh, the, the project, the Conga mining project, is actually, it's an extension of, a, um, of the Anacocha mining project, which already, which has already been under development for the past 20 years or so, and um, is already uh, taken an impact on the region's waters. So the city of Cajamarca gets its um, gets its water on the on the west side from those irrigation canals that I just showed you from the protected area right outside town, and on the east side, deeper into the mountains, it gets the water from the area where the mine now is. And that water, for the past 20 years that the mine has been in operation, that water has been disappearing. So the people on the west side of the city, they still don't have water. People on the east side of the city, they only have like uh, two or three hours of water a day now, whereas they had had you know, water 24-7 just 10, 15 years ago. And the population is 100%, almost, I would say, aside for a few few communities up in the mountains where, where the residents all work at the mine, almost everybody is opposed to uh, the Conquer Project. And up here on the hill overlooking town, in addition to the insignia of the local sports teams, it says Loa Conga, Low to the Conquer Project. And uh, there's uh, protests and demonstrations against the project almost constantly in the city of Cajamarca. And uh, Cajamarca has got is extremely historically significant back in um, in uh, 1532, it was where um, uh, Pizarro took captive Atahualpa, the, um, the king of the, uh, the Inca Empire, and held him uh, hostage in this room, uh, which was in order to ransom him. Uh, Atahualpa had the room filled entirely up to, up to his head with uh, gold and silver that was brought from all over the empire, and then Pizarro went ahead and killed him anyway. Sala principal de la casa del cacique de las setas, Guargan, Guarangas de Calamarca, que es la misma que según como tradicional, como tradición, ofreció a Atahualpa y no de oro y plato por su rescate. The uh, principal room of the house of the chieftain of the seven districts of Calamarca, which is the same which according to common tradition, um, Atahualpa offered to fill with um, uh, gold and silver for his rescue. And they're still fighting over gold and silver in the region today. Only instead of Pizarro and the Españoles, it's Newmont Mining of Colorado and other mineral companies. Accompanied by the uh, National Police, you can see there, riot police almost constantly on patrol. This is uh, more... Um, pre Inca ruins right outside town. Ah. And this is uh, this is the site of the project. This is Conga. This is one of the beautiful, pristine alpine lakes, which uh, Newmont Mining wants to turn into a into a giant open pit mine. And the idea is that they, the company is saying, oh, don't worry, we'll save your lakes. We're going to relocate them. <laughs> Actually, they're going to, uh, they're, they're going to like, build reservoirs and, uh, and pump the water out to these reservoirs while they turn the, the original lakes into, um, into big open pit mines. And the campesinos are not going for that. So this was a, um, a big demonstration, which was, uh, which was held there. This would have been World Water Day, which is March 22nd of last year when I was there. And fortunately, it was all tranquilo. The police didn't open fire on the protest when I was there. Thank goodness they have done that a few times. And over the past few years of protest, numerous people have been killed in, um, in this region. This is just outside of the... Uh, the uh, the area which is slated for mining, but this is what the whole landscape looks like. This is what they call the Puna, which is the, the Alpine Plain, which is just dotted with lakes. And here you can see the 
this is already this is the, the, the line of the, the road leading into the the area which is under mineral development, and you can see the mineral exploitation encroaching onto the landscape here. Again, sorry to offend the vegans. One of the things that the Campesino has used the lakes for is for um, aquaculture. This is trout. In a, uh, feeding the trout that we ate for dinner, really, really good trout, um, in one of the uh, local communities near the mine site. And uh, then after dinner, a, a big community meeting was held to um, oppose the mining project. Passing around coca leaf to ward off the cold. And this is the Anacocha mine, which they now want to expand into the Conga area. This is once again the uh, the big protest that was held in the in the concession area. El agua es un tesoro que vale más que oro. Agua sí, oro no. Water is a treasure that's worth more than gold. Water, yes. Gold, no. Multiple kids are involved. And uh, this is interesting. This is. Uh, at the beginning of the protest, they were all singing the Peruvian national anthem. And you can see they've got the Peruvian flag over here, but they've also got another flag. This is a variation of the Wifala, which is the, uh, uh, the sort of rainbow flag of the uh, indigenous peoples of the Andes. So the sort of uh, the, the more traditional Peruvian nationalism, and then there's the, uh, the more um, uh, sort of uh, indigenous ethnic nationalism, and they exist side by side in the movement with a certain degree of tension. No mas minoria in Cabecera de Cuenca, no more mining in the, uh, uh, in the, in the, in the watershed. Oyanta, Tresonera, Oyanta, being present Oyanta Omala, is uh, treasonous. And uh, it's interesting, uh, the movement uh, is, is really it's being organized by what they call the Rondas Campesinas, which are the, the, um, the peasant self-defense patrols, uh, which got started back in the, in the 70s and the 1980s, um, where there was a lot of, a lot of lawlessness in the region, uh, due not only to uh, Sendero Luminoso, but also just due, because Sendero Luminoso didn't really have much of a stronghold up here in Calamarca. So up here in Con Market, I've more to do with cattle rustling and just banditry. And in these uh, very remote communities, there really isn't any presence of, of the government, of the state, until the Indians start protesting, of course. So uh, they formed what they call the Rondas Campesinas, which are the peasant self-defense patrols. And, um, that, and so that's really the primary sort of self-organization of the Campesino communities up in the mountains. And now they're the ones who are organizing the protest in every village will send uh, the, the patrols, will organize everybody who wants to participate and put together a, a delegation or an affinity group for the big regional mobilizations, such as this one, where, they, where they're occupying the, the site, the concession site for the mineral project. So if these are all, each, each Ronda will have uh, you know, its own banner representing its own village. You know, they are marching down to one of the lakes, which the mining company wants to destroy. Not exactly in chronological order, sorry. Singing the national anthem again. It's the Peruvian flag and the indigenous flag. There are a lot of women in the Rondeos. Only for Rondeos. Rondeos? Oh, it's still Rondeos. They also have that. This is Quechua. Can you read this, Miriam? Huh? This is Quechua. Can you, can you read this? <laughs> what do you mean? She could. It's something to do with that. Okay. Village band getting ready to play. This is the march down to the down to the Laguna. When we got down there, there was uh, this one campesino playing his fiddle on top of a rock by the waterside. 
because when you have your musical instruments you should pu- put them all night near the lagoon, or near um falls, so that the spirits will oh can manifest and they can go the next day and check on water is So Marca di Cala Marca And uh finally now we're moving into uh moving into the jungle, into the rainforest. This is uh Puerto Maldonado where they're uh loading papaya Hi. onto a boat and bananas and take it down the uh the the river which is a tributary of the Amazon. And this was uh the uh, the first big uprising of nineteen ninety nine was um, uh, in, in, in the Amazon rainforest, I'm st- uh, sorry, 2009, was uh, in the Amazon rainforest. That was the year that the uh, the free trade agreement took um, took effect with the United States, the, the Peruvian free trade agreement. Um, and it's very, uh, it's almost a perfect analogy to what happened in, um, in Mexico in uh, 1994. If people remember 1994, Mexico entered NAFTA, and uh, one of the provisions of NAFTA, which was sort of pushed through by the Mexican Congress in preparation for the free trade agreement was uh, they made it easier for um, uh, indigenous and communal lands uh, to be to be privatized and to be uh, and to be sold off to agribusiness and mineral interests or whatever. And this is this was the, the primary grievance which led to the emergence of the Zapatista movement in Chiapas. Well the same thing happened in Peru virtually the uh, one of the provisions that was passed through the Peruvian Congress for the Free Trade Agreement was um, for the uh, lands which had been entitled to indigenous communities could be, that would make it more easy for them to be to be privatized. And um, the indigenous actually had an uprising in uh, in the Amazon rainforest in um, in uh, that year in 2009. In, uh, in very interestingly, on I believe it was June 6th, which is um, just two days after the uh, t- the the anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. In, um, in Beijing in 1989, um, in almost exactly 20 years after June 6, uh, uh, 2009, in Peru was what they called the the, uh, the uh, Amazon's Tiananmen Square massacre, where at a place called Bagua, the uh, indigenous were blocking the roads, and they, what they've been doing all over the Amazon, blocking the roads, taking over the oil installations, taking over the hydro dams, and so on. They were blocking a road. Just to, similarly, this happens to be in Madre de Dios, the same situation. These are um, uh, Ashaninka people, I believe. Um, and the national police opened fire on them, and uh, something like uh, 30 people were killed. Awahu. Right, that in uh, Awahu people, yeah. But this is um, Harukbat and the Ashaninka people in. Um, in Madre de Dios, which is in the southern part of the Amazon, as opposed to Bagua, which is up in the northern part of the Peruvian Amazon. So this again was a part of that same uprising in uh, 2009. Paz y justicia sobre nuestros derechos ancestrales, peace and justice over our ancestral rights. So they're kicking it real, so to speak, putting on war paint and marching with spears and bows and arrows to demonstrate that they are serious about defending their land. And the kids are involved too. And there we are back at the beginning. So uh, it's interesting, it's sort of part two of this saga, perhaps just about to open now because there's a uh, a new free trade agreement called the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or the TPP, which is uh, moving ahead, um, which would further open up Peru to um, to agribusiness and uh, mineral and oil interests and so on. And it would actually be, uh, just as uh, NAFTA was conceived as sort of a, as a regional uh, or continental um, free trade agreement for all of North America, the, uh, the TPP is conceived as the same sort of thing for all the Pacific Rim nations. And uh, last month, there was a round of negotiations for the TPP in Lima, and there were, um, there were uh, protests, as you might imagine. So are we going to try to establish our... Uh, is that about? Are we yeah. going to try to establish our... Uh, 
try to establish um, our um, Skype connection. I think we are actually still connected, so we um, based on Rhea that she needs to start talking in the future. Let's, let's okay, well, how do we get her face up on the well, screen? Before we do that, um, yeah. just for my viewers, just give a... She's, what, the, she's, she's been able the, to the time frame time. you were there, just repeat it for anyone, oh, anyone who was watching. I was in Peru? Yeah. Well, the photos are oh, from, yeah, 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 yeah. from three different trips over the course okay. of the past three years. But I was most recently there in May. All right, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think, you know, you think that the camera needs to go... Uh, uh, she's uh, Anne Marie, is an activist who was involved in the off. protest against the TTP. She is... Oh, she's the one that sounds keyboard. Yeah, I yeah. Okay, uh, great presentation, Bill. Uh, well, um, my name is Ana Maria Crispe. I am a, I am an activist, and um, I've been involved against uh, the DPP, you know, for a while. Uh, looking at all sides, uh, I really have to say there was no media coverage in Peru. Uh, and that was very unfortunate me because it, it seems like every, there was a secrecy even about the event itself. And even the photo that was, uh, that was prepared by, by uh, like a few organizations was not really well publicized. So they've been keeping it very, very low key, very hush hush, to try to avoid protests. Okay. Uh, so I, I have to say also that the whole Peru is dominated by a whole um, right wing media. So there was very few um, um, journalists that I that I saw myself during the during the conversations at the hotel. And, um, and um, even the, there was kind of like at the last minute, uh, we, we raised there like a month before, and only at the last minute they gave us uh, the schedule when our talk was going to take place. They requested our talk in a, in a PDF uh, form, and yet we had no answer till, till the day, almost like the, the day before that we were going to be on. And it happened to many of us that we um, that is called the stakeholder meeting. So um, my presentation uh, was about what, which my expertise is about, which is the GMOs, and it was a topic not discussed at all, even within the forum. You see, maybe they didn't find me, or there wasn't a miscommunication. Um, there is a uh, problem with GMOs uh, in Peru. We already know, and Bill has already given you some data. And curiously, I attended a week ago Dr. Fagan, uh, who is from the U.S., and who is a co-author with two other um, uh, biologist doctors, I think, uh, one of the best documents there is about the things about GMOs uh, was here in Peru, and he was criticized by some members of the government uh, because uh, because still in Peru is business as usual, and um, whatever um, Omala is, uh, you know, like like Bill says, Omala, you know, was elected on. on fake promises, and so far uh, all the people are very disappointed about the promises that he made, none of them have been accomplished. So there is this, uh, there is this booming business, apparent, an, an apparent booming business. Uh, we have to remember that uh, the uh, Bill uh, Clinton, you know, um, was here. And uh, the day that she presented um, like a future uh, business with the United States, uh, there was people from uh, from Walmart, uh, 
people from Pfizer, the same very companies that are pushing uh, the GMO. So it, it was really, like I said, I was really disappointed. And, um, okay, so. So what, what was the role of the people from Pfizer and Walmart? Pfizer and Walmart came to a meeting when um, when Hillary Clinton uh, came a uh, few months ago. Oh, yes, yes, was yes, 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 right, 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 right. Because I think they're preparing everything we do. Everything, all the business are going on, and I think this is in preparations for the TPP. Uh, business with the mining, uh, despite the fact that there's, there has been many rallies and protests, that is still going on, many deaths, um, some people have been killed, and uh, nothing has been done. I mean, uh, and even uh, uh, one of the ministries uh, recently said, for example, that Congo is still goes. And they are, um, they just made a, um, an in, a new investment in uh, building a reservoir. So obviously all the, all the plans for mining, not just on that, they're all over uh, Peru, and there are many. Now there is El Perón, uh, Conga, Cañaris, you name it. They, and there has been uh, many rallies, uh, like since last year, you know, for, for, uh, for them to try to stop uh, this mining business, which is I mean, it's not only abusing uh, the industry itself, because it's in the hands of the wealthy multinational companies, but it's also because it's, um, I mean, these, these populations are poor. Uh, there is a threat of uh, contamination of water. There are, you know, the whole livelihood is in jeopardy. And, and the peasants understood this very well. And like I said, uh, there was no, there was no interest, or in in the part of the conversations for uh, for the ones that were going to speak against the TPP to really give us a uh, a uh, like the microphone, you know, and explain why it was bad for everybody. And my uh, uh, my talk about the GMOs. Uh, went very well, by the way. Uh, some people approached me, but like I said, in, in the event, there was not even a table uh, for us to give our pamphlets that I send out to, to make copies explaining all the risks of the TPP, and there was not even that. So I had to hand some out. Uh, some I couldn't, but I, I, did, I did my best to raise my voice and on the same day that we all, the stakeholders, uh, gave their presentations, there was a whole forum with everybody, you know, like the business people and the stakeholders. And very few of us raised our hands. And uh, since they were talking about global warming and the environment, I raised uh, the issues about GMOs and global warming with the animals, uh, you know, after all the scandals that we have seen in the US, um, and I think even the recent, the recent one with the purchasing of, uh, I forgot the name of the company who's buying, the, the Chinese company who's buying the pork Stanley or something like that. So, but, but like I said, uh, no, and I even, uh, the I put it the same so yeah, the, the same thing. Yeah. Yes, remember that Chinese company that is trying to buy the pork business? I think uh, it's, it's Smithfield, right? Smithfield in the US? Yes, yeah, Smithfield. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, so this, this is not related because we think that all these companies are behind the TPP. And, and, and some of the other. Uh, people that participated in the rally and also uh, during the TPP uh, stakeholder forum also talk about the problems with the, the medicine, the race prices of the medicine, and also um, 
the the part where the for the rights for the property rights and the uh, you know the access to intellectual I think it's called intellectual property and uh, and, and obviously labor because recently there has been a lot of news about abuses uh, from companies who's abusing their workers and and yet there was some also news that are the foreigner companies are, are the ones who who really are trying to to do a better job uh, to pay them better and things like that but there's still the small companies who do the job for the big ones such as Walmart and I'm sure Walmart is behind all this you know when it comes to uh, clothing and everything that is a, that is a sewn in a, an industrial sewn in Lima called Gamarra uh, where uh, a lot of uh, goods are produced and, and they are already in business with Walmart. So that's uh, that's one of the problems with the TPP because at, at the end it's also like, you know, it's against their jobs in the U.S. Uh, that we need so badly, you know, we need to return to our industry in the U.S. And uh, like you say, it's, a, it's another way of uh, just abusing workers and paying lower wages. So is it which mostly, is going on is it, Anna Marie, is it mostly organized labor which is leading the, the, uh, the opposition to the TPP in Peru? Yes, there has been there has been rallies. Uh, there were some workers strikes. There has been uh, uh, doctors strikes. There has been a lot of things going on. Unfortunately, like I said at the beginning, the whole country is the media is a right wing media. So it's only one, it's only one, two papers that are really leftist, and one is a. Uh, uh, Hildebrand is the weekly newspaper that is the only one who's been accessing uh, and recently something has happened. I don't know I don't know if I can show you this but um a new left when uh, let's see this is the this is the this is the newspaper I'm also I'm also showing you if you see it. Something just happened only a week ago. Uh, all the leftist groups, uh, knowing that there is no voice for us, have uh, united together uh, to make a front line against all the things that Umala, uh, you know, has promised and is not doing anything about. It. And I think this is also in preparation of future uh, elections, because they're, they're saying that in 2016, uh, Nadine Heredia, which is the Umala's wife, uh, it seems to to be a possible candidate. So people are getting you know, so I don't know. Yes. Yeah, so there is a new, uh, and that is a hope. And I think, I think we got inspired after the death of uh, Diaz Canseco, who's the, one of the major uh, leftist uh, leader. And 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 you know, it's it's only Hugo Blanco. There are small papers. Uh, I believe it's Diario 16, like Diario 16, and uh, Hildebrand. Hildebrand in sus trece, uh, for those of you who speak uh, Spanish, I suggest it's only like, I think it's 20 dollars a year, it only comes every weekend. Uh, let me see if I can show you the, the it's, it's Hildebrand, one of the major, um, um, one of the best journalists there is in Peru. And despite the fact that, it's, uh, that the media is governed by, by the right wing, uh, he, um, is, there was some um, there was some opinion uh, pool that said that Hildebrand is still the one person that most Peruvians trust when it comes to news. Because other than that, that is on the web. I looked for their website. I can't find it. But do we want to maybe consider... Oh, yeah, I'm trying to look on the first page so I can show you. And I don't seem to find it. Maybe we should... We've only got about 45 minutes left. Maybe we should 
have a discussion amongst ourselves, and Anna Maria can stay on the line and participate. Yes, uh, yes. You, yes. You okay, here you need to hear the line. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. Build a brain. H-I-L-D-E-B-R-A-N-T. Is there a place? And you can find it. You can subscribe. It's obviously in Spanish. And it's only that the, the surviving and the most, uh, you know, the, the better uh, trusted uh, paper. Uh, but like I said, we are, we are not giving up the people who are uh, fighting for the rights in Peru. We are not giving up uh, the TPP. Uh, REG uh, just published, uh, which is another organization in Peru who's fighting against the TPP, just sent a letter to President Umala uh, talking specifically about uh, the, the possible problems with medication, you know, the raising prices of uh, medicines, and, and also because of the property rights. Because remember, we have a lot of, uh, now that the Peru, um, like the potatoes and everything is booming, it seems like a lot of companies want to have patents on our goods. And that has been already attempted by France and other countries. Sorry, you know? Gonna, yes? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to transition over to, uh, to a discussion and Q&A. Okay. So okay, you, great. Are you ready to hear a final thing you want to say? Or are you ready to, do you want to should we switch over? No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, great. Uh, I just wanted to, one thing I wanted to clarify from what you were saying, which I think may have been a little unclear. So there were, um, in, in Peru, while the, the TPP meeting happened, one of the ways that the, um, the, negoti the negotiations on this agreement are completely closed, the negotiating text of the agreement until about a week ago weren't even accessible to any members of Congress. But the way that they try to say that it's an open process is they set up one day in the negotiations where people from nonprofits and community groups and NGOs can come in and give little presentations, and so the, the negotiators sort of sit there and and a couple of them sort of listen to you and you give you give a little ten minute talk and then they're done with you. So when Anna Marie was talking about her talk, that that was basically the talk to the negotiators of the agreement. Um, separate from that, there was an, an alternative forum that was organized by the organization that she mentioned, Reg which was an, a, an alliance of the, the, the opposition groups speaking to themselves. So that was a, a separate event. But the event that she actually spoke at was the actual officially sanctioned event organized by the, the people actually negotiating TPP. That, that was Adam Weissman speaking. So, anybody yeah, have any One more thing I need to say is uh, regarding GMOs, I showed them that uh, the TPP is against labeling. And since we are losing that battle in the U.S., and we have a law in Peru against GMO crops, however, um, we have the labeling too, but I just found out also last year that the law is still awaiting for a, re a regulation. So the law is just sort of like painted on the wall, and there is no regulation, so there is no enforcement at all. Anyway, comments, questions, observations, criticisms, lay it on us. Oh, uh, so I just, as I'm live, if anyone, if, does anyone have a problem with me getting a question from you on live stream or no? No. Okay, cool. Okay. What does she think, Ana Maria Howard? This is Lydia. Uh, Hello. Can you hear Ana Maria? Uh, yeah, barely. Uh, oh, okay, oh, Cecilia, how oh, are you? You can ask her what, what does she think about the new uh, left, piece, left party that has just been... Yeah, she, she mentioned that. She yeah, mentioned that. what does she think? Does she think that they will receive support? Or? And Maria, we're wondering uh, if you could tell us more about, oh, this, about this new left political initiative which has been established. Uh, could you tell us, what, what, does it have a name yet? And do you feel it's going to, to win some support? Uh, you, you mean for uh, against the DPP? Well, there's, there's, there's no initiative after the death of Diaz Canseco to, to try to unify the, 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 the left. Oh, yes. 
Yes, a very good initiative. Uh, and it was, by the way, it was uh, promoted by the priest uh, Marco Arana. Marco Arana and Santo has been, pro you know, they made a proposal and they all came together. And I think if the left, uh, you know, the, the left has no choice unless we came together. And I think we finally realized of it and that's what was going on. Marco Arana is one of the key leaders in the, uh, the struggle in Camargo. Marco Arana has been the key leaders on the Conca issue and, you know, uh, for decades. I um, mean, he's been the, the right livelihood award winner, I believe, in 2008 because of his fight against the mining companies in Cajamarca. Is there another question? Yeah, the, 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 um, how do the campesinos do the left? And I guess it depends on which left you're talking about. In Cajamarca, the, um, the regional government is controlled by a left-wing party called Patria Roja. And uh, it's very much... Oh, Pat Patria Roja is united with us. Yes. Uh, pa if Patria Roja has come together, uh, I'm not so sure if I have the, uh, the whole rules, but there are many. Even Patria Roja, uh, you know, with Marco Arana, with Tierra Libertad, that's his, uh, that's his, uh, his political party, who, by the way, is the most organized political party that is uh, in Peru right now. Uh, Marco Arana's uh, party is called Tierra Libertad, which means land of freedom. So, in Cajamarca, for instance, yes, the Campesino movement and the, the actual regional government, which is controlled by the left, are very much united. But it sort of varies in different parts of the country. And the interesting well, thing... Well, yeah, yeah. I, I believe that's the reason why there is this movement of getting together, uh, because either we do that or we just disappear. Because they, they I mean, we have to... Uh, Full on long of a story of corruption in Peru. I mean, we have a president in jail and two presidents now uh, investigated by corruption, Alan Garcia, and now also Toledo. Toledo. So it's not, you know, that there is a reason uh, there are charges of corruption to President Toledo too. So it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's just too much. So it's, it seems like you know, we had to do something, and uh, and it was the initiative of Arana to do something and get together. And finally, we are. And let's see how it goes from there, because we don't know yet, you know. Oh, by the way, some of the media is collapsing. RPP just uh, fired a lot of people because they're, they are having financial problems. And RPP uh, having a bunch of Fujimoristas in, in that uh, station. The station owns a lot of stations in Peru. And I just said that even Rosa Maria Palacios has been fired and, and because of uh, financial troubles. So, big cuts so who knows? Maybe something is happening in Peru. You know? Big cutbacks to media coverage, just like in this country, unfortunately. Well, the interesting thing which happened in 2009 with the indigenous uprising in the Amazon, was traditionally this was the most remote, isolated part of the country. And they actually began to form alliances even with, uh, even with the urban workers in Lima. And there was actually uh, a general strike. The original, the original issue was transit hikes, just as uh, what sparked the, the current protest in the protest movement in, in Brazil. Uh, but there was a one-day general strike in, uh, in Lima in 2009 over transit transit fair hikes initially, but then they also adopted the demands of the indigenous movement in the Amazon. So you have the beginnings of uh, these kind of alliances coming together. Which doesn't seem to be happening in Brazil. Interesting. No, it does, does not seem to be happening so much in Brazil yet. Yet. It's only been going on in Brazil what, for about a week now, right? So we'll see what happens. Well, I also have to say, I'm not so, uh, I also have to say that despite Despite everything that is going on, there is also uh, 
and this comes from uh, just just the, the persons themselves from some of other organizations that have uh, no political affiliation in Peru who are doing uh, the best to promote. For example, there was this uh, this fair, the biodiversity fair, or uh, from the 21st to the 24th. And uh, some patients came with like their potatoes and the different type of fruits uh, from the jungle and the sierra. So the, uh, there is some hope, uh, you know, we hope, uh, to, to do something. And there are some people who are turning into a better diet. I mean, I never saw so many restaurants that are vegetarians, by the way, in Lima. Nothing like that in the 1950s. There was only one, and today, in every, in, I, I believe in every district, at least there is one or two. I mean, Aflores has like 25 vegetarian restaurants, for example, and the statement is because of global warming. So the promotion of, uh, you know, between health and global warming uh, is also making people think twice about eating animals that, by the way, there, there is a famous uh, biologist in Peru who I heard he works for Monsanto, his name is Ernesto Bustamante, and he has declared uh, on TV that, for example, all our animals in Peru are fed with GMOs, and they are both, I guess, you know, from either U.S. or Brazil, or Paraguay, who are the major, uh, you know, growers uh, of EMOs. And, and that was... Yeah, just open up for more questions, because we're running short on time, so... Okay, okay, okay. Anybody else? Questions, comments, criticisms? Yeah. Yeah, the, Ana Maria. Um, this is Phil. Uh, do, you, do you feel that uh, this new United Left uh, in Peru can can actually uh, challenge uh, the established the political establishment there I mean are they uh, are they strong enough to uh, to uh, challenge the political establishment at a, at a national level well I guess now with this uh Unification of this uh, leftist front, perhaps there is. Uh, Marco Arana already sent a letter to Umala uh, to, to claim for all the, you know, the, the, the unfair uh, movements and the killings and everything to protest about Conga and everything else. Uh, so, like I said, perhaps there is hope. It is very important for all of us, not just Peruvians, but also for U.S. citizens, because we, we keep saying that these uh, free trade agreements are not good for the U.S. or not good for the countries that they're doing business well. Uh, the all, all it is is just in the hands of big corporations who have an unlimited ambition to, to be wealthy, you know, and when it comes to foods, and because I'm a dietitian, they already, uh, the mayor of food, big, which, which is called Big Food, the mayor food companies have already declared that 45% of their sales in the future 10 years are going to come from small countries. And I really believe that that comes from uh, the TPP countries. 